2022 Specialized Tarmac SL7 Comp, size 54, weighing at 8.36 kilos, 18 pounds, 7 ounces. 2022 Specialized Tarmac SL7, size 54, 16 pounds, 11 ounces, and in kilos, 7.58 kilos. Boom. Hey, how's it going, everyone? GC Performance here, back with another video. Today, we're taking a look at two Tarmac SL7s I have here. They're both 2022 models. The one on my left over here is the Tarmac SL7 Comp that retails for $5,500. The one over here on my right retails for $8,300, the Tarmac SL7 Expert. They're specced with two different types of components, one being SRAM and the other being Shimano. But we're going to go ahead and see, let's say you're looking to get into an SL7. These are the both the lower of the price points of the bike. So I figured I'd go ahead and show off what you get for the money, which one's a better bang for the buck, and uh, go that way. But before I get into the video, uh, as you guys just saw the weights of both bikes, it's about a, I want to say a pound and a half difference. And these are two different platforms of shifting. One being that this is SRAM. So it's 12 gears in the rear, two in the front. The Shimano here is 12 gears in the rear, two in the front, but there are two different systems of how they shift. And also that these two have external batteries, external battery here, external battery here that you take off and charge. And the way they shift is like a paddle shift, like your car. One makes it harder one makes it easier, and then when you click them together, it shifts the front chain ring, okay? So this is a little bit more of a newer style of shifting when you're when you're considering a SRAM drivetrain system. Whereas over here on Shimano, you have the 12 gears in the rear, two in the front, but the battery is internal, so you would charge it from the rear. They give you a charging cord that goes right here. Um, and the way this is, this is more of a classic shifting style. You have the downshift here and the upshift, I'm sorry, upshift here, downshift here um, on the bike, and it's traditional. So this controls the rear derailleur, this controls the front derailleur, and that is it. So this is a semi-wireless system. That is a full wireless system they have for these shifting things. So although I'm comparing these bikes, they are two different systems completely. Uh, so keep that in mind. And that's the reason why this one's a little bit heavier is because of the fact of the crank set and the cassette that comes on this bike is much more heavier than the stock crank set on there. But anyways, so starting off with both bikes, we're gonna get into wheels. This bike right here comes with the DT Swiss R470 aluminum wheels. This bike comes stock with that. Whereas over here, these come with carbon fiber wheels. These are $1,000 wheels on here. The carbon fiber will be much lighter. They're a little bit deeper dish wheel as well. So they give you a little bit more of an aerodynamic benefit and they are tubeless ready. Um, that is where the weight system is gonna come in there. So benefit to the bike with the carbon wheels, the Tarmac SL7 Expert, you do get much nicer wheels, but but it does come at a steeper price point on here. So that's the reason why. Also, we can see here the tires that come on side of this bike on the comp, they're just the regular Turbo Pros, whereas these are going to be the s work Turbo tires. They're both 700 by 26 C tires in terms of the width, but the tires are different. Um, and also, just so you guys know, these tires are not tubeless, these tires are not tubeless. Both rims are tubeless ready to be set up, but you would have to change your tires on there. So keep that in mind. Going to the handlebars on the bike, this is going to be the cheapest model of handlebar that Specialized makes. It's just an alloy round bar. It's actually very narrow on here. When you go ahead and grab it, you do feel it much more. Whereas the handlebar that they put on this Tarmac Expert over here, it's aluminum bar, yes, but it's more ergonomic. You can see the tops of it are a little bit wider and it feels more comfortable while riding. It doesn't feel like the alloy is digging into your hand. I myself have this exact same bike, exact same bar right now. And you do have some pressure points here when riding, if you go away from the hoods and you rest right here, you do notice that but the handlebars are different. They're still alloy, so the weight's probably exactly the same, but a little bit more form-fitting on here. One downside I would say for $8,300 bike, I would prefer to see a carbon fiber bar included with the price point, but that is just my opinion. Uh, stems on the bike are exactly the same. They're both specialized stems. They both have the same bolts. Uh, with this bike, you do get the, I believe you get the uh, included out front garment mount. I'll double check. You might not, but I'll double check when I figure that out. Uh, but this bike does not come with it. This bike just comes with the same stem, no out front garment mount. They are compatible, but they do not come with it. Same exact tape they come with. They're both the Supercast bar tape and they look really, really nice on the bike. The frames are identical. The only thing different is going to be the paint set on here. Although that one is a comp and one is the expert, the frames are the exact same frame sets. They are both specialized 10R carbon fiber. So you see here we have the Fact Carbon 10R. They're the exact same fork, uh, exact same way you run the cables. Nothing different in terms of the platform. These are both a 10R carbon fiber frame designed in California and they run the same exact way. So you're not losing any performance there. The seat posts are exactly the same as well. So keep that in mind. So main differences right now are the wheels. 
the tires and the handlebar being a little bit fatter. Now for the shifters. For the SRAM Rival shifters, these are a little bit different than the Force and the Red. These are a little bit smaller for this year. They're more ergonomic and they fit a little bit better, but we can tell the hoods are smaller and there's not as much functionality with this group set because it is cheaper. To give you a reference, SRAM Rival, the whole group set together with the crank set and cassette and chain and everything and rotors, it's $1,600. They are wireless shifters, like I said. They do feel nice. I have this exact same group of, like I said, on my bike. Uh, I have no issues with it. It performs. It does what it does. It does what it needs to do. The shifting feels phenomenal. There is no wishing I had a higher-end group set on there. The group, set, the group set shifts how it should shift to me, and I enjoy a lot. Um, one thing that I will say people do say that I have not experienced myself, they say that the uh, chain ring sometimes drops from the big to small. Um, again, here in Florida, we don't actually have that a lot because we don't, there's no need to shift up and down in the front chain ring. And uh, usually when it's adjusted right, there's no issues there, but keep that in mind uh, for that. Whereas on the Altegra shifters over here, this is what everyone seems to be known for. Everyone loves this kind of platform. These are a wireless shifter again. They have their own batteries inside here. These are a 1632 little circular battery. Um, the hoods are a little bit taller this year. The grips on here are less aggressive, but they feel very nice. Shimano's always known to have that nice, smooth, ergonomic uh, shifter shape. They increase the paddle size. The brakes work really, really well. Um, so a lot of people do like the Shimano shifting on there. It shifts very, very fast. And actually, no no one really complains about the, the, the chain drop or anything like that on the Shimano. I will say the Shimano shifting up and down gear-wise is more superior than SRAM. That is just my, my opinion. But um, but in terms of me running this RAM on there, I have no issues that I want the Altegra group set. If I could choose them and they're both the same price, hell yeah, I'd take the Altegra. But the whole Altegra group set together is like 2,600 bucks compared to SRAM Rivals, which is 1,600 bucks. So you're getting a really good platform. Differences again, this is a mineral oil for the hydraulic disc brake. This is a dot fluid for a hydraulic disc brake. Um, this is a more pressurized system. This is a not a, a, a mineral oil like they use over there, an oil. This is actually like a real braking uh, fluid, so it is a uh, more it is a more actuated system. The more you pull on, the more you heal, feel it, the more those brake and those calipers are going to push harder onto it. Whereas Shimano is always known to have on here a more solid brake. It's just open to close, and you get a solid snappy brake, and it's going to be the same force all the way through. So that's known for that. Uh, besides that, in terms of the components on there. You get a nice, you get a nice gear combo on here. Uh, you get a 5236 in the front. You get an 1130 cassette in the back. Uh, you get a really the battery system tends to last longer on the Shimano because it's one massive battery on there, and it is going to be a lighter system than the SRAM rival. The Altega crank is a nice design. They're both threaded bottom brackets, but the Shimano gearings just seems to be a more of a normal setup. Whereas I've heard, and in even my case scenario, this being a 4835 and a 1036 cassette on here when i'm typically riding here in the flats in florida i'm literally here to here that's about the gear range i use uh this is set up where you can add a power meter to it for only 200 dollars or 300 dollars extra you can add a power meter to the opposite side so that is a big plus whereas the shimano you have to add a stages crank arm on there or something like that but yes the the shifting wise is just more personal preference now saddles i believe i want to say this is a Specialized Power Expert Saddle. So it's a hollow titanium rail, plastic body. And on here, this is just a comp, which is gonna be chromoly rails, plastic body, and then the wheels as well. Now, really, this is what's gonna come down to. One is 5,500 bucks, one is 8,300 bucks. Uh, the wheels in there are a nice option. The Altegra group sets are a really nice option. But what I did on this bike is I went ahead and I upgraded. I got this bike because I had the options to make the upgrades I wanted to. This bike is a great bike if someone just wanted to spend that much money and be like, that's my bike I wanna ride. But I wanted more options and choices in terms of wheels I wanted. I wanted a deeper dish wheel. So I picked this platform with this gear shifters, wireless gear shifters, and I went ahead and upgraded my own wheels I wanted to. So I started at a cheaper price point and made the upgrades that I wanted to to get up to around the $8,300 mark. If you guys have seen my video on my bike that I did on the comp, I actually upgraded my wheels, an OSPW, a different saddle, a ceramic speed bottom bracket, and I think I'm right at 7,600 bucks. I don't have a carbon bar on there, but if I add a carbon bar, I'd still be under that $8,300 mark. Now, some people would just say, hey, I really prefer Shimano over SRAM, then that's fine. And you go ahead and pick that one. 
but I got the bike that I wanted and the color I wanted and the platform that I actually, I, I did want Shimano over SRAM, but, but the platform that performed really, really nice for under what I wanted because I have the option to upgrade it. And I get an extra pair of wheels for training if I wanted to. So hopefully this, this video does you some justice. Um, but either way, both bikes are gonna get you in at a great price point. This is definitely more stock ready in terms of you can just buy it and go. You don't really have to worry about anything. This one I rode for a while as well with the aluminum wheels and I had a great option, but they give you a lot of 5,500 still feels like, I know it's a lot of money, but it doesn't feel like that top of the line price where $8,300 almost feels like a premium price tag you used to pay for a bike and you're still getting only $1,000 wheels with a DT Swiss 370 hub. The hubs aren't bad, they're still DT Swiss, but I prefer a 350 hub or just something higher end when you're paying 8,300 bucks and even a carbon bar. You put a carbon bar in here, you're set, but yeah, that's that's my two cents on the, on the situation. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. If you guys have any questions between these two models, let me know down below as well. I can answer those for you. Um, either way, the bikes are going to feel pretty much similar. Just the shifting experience might be a little bit different. Um, but if you get similar wheels, you add $1,000 wheels to here, then you're only at $6,500, and you're still walking away with uh, almost a thousand some dollars less. So that's my take on the situation. Thank you guys again so much for watching. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Free of body sound test on Tarmac SL7 Comp. Here we go. The stock DT Swiss R470 wheels. All right, next up, the expert. Tarmac SL7 Expert Shimano Altegra Di212 speed. Free of body sound test on a DT Swiss 370 hub, 18 tooth ratchet. Very quiet. Alright guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.